Let us worship. Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Amos. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain? and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale. We will make the ephah small and the shekel great and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for single silver and the needy for a pair of sandals and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter to Timothy. First of all, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord. How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. Then he asked another, And how much do you owe? He replied, A hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and make it eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourself by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you to the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, 
who will give you what is your own. No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. of my and Whitney's heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and redeemer. Please be seated. This morning's sermon is courtesy of Sermons That Work and is written by the Reverend Canon Whitney Rice, who works for the Bishop's staff in Missouri. And I'm particularly thankful for this sermon because I don't know what you all thought about that gospel, but I think it was a, a little crazy. So um, let's hear what Whitney has to say. Jesus is not making a whole lot of sense in our gospel today, at least at first blush. He tells the parable of that dishonest manager, and people have beat their heads against this text for generations, trying to figure out what in the world he was talking about. Clergy, lay people, seminary professors, and commentators alike, everyone agrees that at least as far as Luke 16 goes, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Let's review the facts as we know them. We start with two characters, the rich man and his manager. Word on the street is that the manager has been embezzling funds and taking kickbacks, and the rich man summons him to his office for a pre-firing dressing down. In serious hot water, the manager realizes that he's not trained for any other type of job and he'd better lay some groundwork for his future. So, going to his master's clients, he reduces their bills, thereby earning himself their gratitude and restoring his master's reputation from someone who employs corrupt officials to someone who is generous with his clients. We can follow up to this point. The manager is trying to make the best of a bad situation, and since he's already defrauded his boss, he might as well go whole hog and make himself look good by unethically reducing the amount of money the clients owe. You might think that when the rich man found out that his manager had again cheated him of money, he would call for tar and feathers. But no, Jesus said that the master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted so shrewdly. And then he goes on to say, for the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And he continues by saying, and I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. What? Yeah, that's what I think too. I read that. I'm like, what? Jesus' words are completely baffling. They don't just seem to match the type of behavior he usually 
asks us to display. There's nothing in the Sermon on the Mount like, Blessed are the shrewd, for they will make eternal homes by means of dishonest wealth. Well, if any of you are in the same boat with this parable, don't panic. There is hope. First of all, remember that parables are meant to be confusing, and this one sure fits the bill. They're meant to turn conventional wisdom on its head, leave listeners scratching their heads, and praying for guidance. But Jesus does not leave us totally without resources. He hands us stories like this, and then he says, trust what you know of me and figure this out. So let's give it another go. What exactly is it that the manager does that is unethical or wrong? He forgives the client's debts. Uh-oh. That sort of rings a bell, doesn't it? I mean, we've all heard this, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. This parable could be about forgiveness. Because why? Well, that still doesn't make sense. If Jesus wanted to talk about forgiveness, why wouldn't he just say there was this guy who had a lot of people owing him money? He could have been a jerk about it, but he said, okay, you guys don't have to pay, and everyone lived happily ever after. Well, once again, we stumble over the nature of our God who doesn't let us get away with easy answers. And why not? Because the truth is, our lives do not have easy answers either. Jesus doesn't tell simple stories because none of us live simple stories. Think of the way the connections you have to the people you love sometimes get hopelessly tangled and snarled until you can't remember what the problem was in the first place, but you sure can't figure out how to fix it either way. Think of those times when you've been between the rock and the hard place, knowing that any decision you make is going to hurt someone. Think of the times you've been driven by circumstances to a place where compromising your integrity seems like a small price to pay if it will just get you out of this mess. Are you still sorry that Jesus told this story of the dishonest manager? Jesus knows that our lives are not black and white, and he also knows that we need guidance to live out of our better selves. And so he gives us the gift of forgiveness. He offers us forgiveness openly, freely, and without restraint. There is nothing we can ever do that will take God's love away from us. There is no way that we will ever be anything than God's most beloved, cherished children, no matter how many mistakes we make, nor how many people we hurt. We are forgiven before we know we are going to do wrong because Jesus loved us even unto death. And knowing that forgiveness is ours for the asking at every step of the way, how can we not want to try it ourselves? Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us? That's what happens in this parable. The dishonest manager is forgiven even as he forgives others. And this is the best part. It's not neat and tight tidy and clean cut. There are still loose ends and ethical questions and uncertainty because once again Jesus knows that this is what our lives are like. We are not God and we cannot offer one another perfect love. We are human and we're always going to have mixed motives and we're going to screw things up even when we're trying to do the right thing. In part, we really want to have integrity, and in part, we just want everyone to see us having integrity. Jesus knows us better than we know ourselves, and in this parable, he tells us that is okay. It's okay to have mixed motives and make mistakes, 
what's important is that we keep trying. If we waited to forgive each other until we had perfect charity in our hearts, we'd be here until the apocalypse. Jesus is saying, just haul off and do it. Forgive everyone. Forgive people even if you know they're wrong. Ouch. Forgive people when you know you're wrong. Even bigger ouch. Forgive people when you don't feel like it, when they aren't talking to you, when you aren't talking to them, and when you don't even have time to do it. Forgive people you've never met. Forgive atrocities so big you are afraid to forgive them. Forgive faults so small you are ashamed they even bother you. Forgive even if you've done it 1,000 times. Forgive even if you've never forgiven before. Seriously, right now, where you're sitting, think of someone who is making you furious. Don't say their name out loud. Just think of them. It could be the guy who cuts you off in traffic. It could be your daughter who's throwing her life away. It could be your spouse who never remembers to take the garbage out. It could be the sibling who hurt and betrayed you so badly you haven't spoken for years. Just do it. Say to that person in your mind, I forgive you. I forgive you. It doesn't matter if you don't feel anything when you say those words, or you might find an overwhelming rush of love and grace, or you may still feel cranky and self-righteous and just plain mad. It doesn't matter. You've taken the first step. Whatever else is in your heart right now, anger, fear, disappointment, there is also a little seed of forgiveness that has sprouted. And one day, if you keep practicing, you're going to find that forgiveness in your heart has grown so great that you will start to forgive yourself. And that will be a great, terrific day in the kingdom of God. There's a bit of the dishonest manager in all of us, wheeling and dealing in front of God and trying to manage our lives to look good before the divine. Jesus tells us today that he sees right through us and that he loves us dearly anyway. Loving not the ideal, but the real, that is the challenge. Loving each other, even when our frailties and failures are so apparent, that is the struggle. And when we can't do it, with the generosity and grace we strive for, the good news is that we are already forgiven. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. Today he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Doug, our bishop, and Michelle, our priest, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, in thy mercy. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Eric, our governor, and Tom, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, in thy mercy. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that, rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, in thy mercy. We must humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Craig, Hannah and baby Humphrey, Anne, Sandy, Derek, Craig, Steve, Mary, Alda, Bill, Gordy, Tom, Winnie, Lauren, Helen, Bob and Doris, all immigrants and refugees, and all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in thy mercy. We commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces, at home and abroad, especially Raymond, Megan, and Carson. Defend them day by day with thy heavenly grace, and grant them a sense of thy abiding presence, wherever they may be. Lord, in thy mercy. Holy Creator, as the pandemic begins to ebb, we ask for your continued protection and guidance. For those who are weary from caring for the ill, we ask for refreshment. For those who have suffered from the disease, we ask for restoration to health. And for all of us, we continue to ask for your wisdom in our daily decisions as we move into this new season of COVID. Lord, in thy mercy. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Rebecca and her majesty Queen Elizabeth, beseeching thee to grant them continued growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, St. Paul, and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth, and establish among them that peace which is the fruit of righteousness, that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord, in thy mercy. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Be who you truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly. Thank you. 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, at this time we would offer prayers for birthdays and anniversaries, but I do not have any listed have I missed anybody's birthday or anniversary? Okay, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share the peace. Please be seated. What do you notice about our tower? It is colored to the very tiffity top. Our little congregation raised almost, well actually a little over $31,000 to do some of the necessary work around here and I am profoundly grateful and impressed by our giving. And I want to give a shout out to the Terra Verde Garden Club who gave the last very generous donation and put us right over the top. So. Thank you to each and every one of you for your prayers, for your support, for your contribution. And for those of you who are scurrying around here to do some of the work by hand so that we don't have to pay people to do that, um, this is good stewardship. We are caring for what has been given to us to care for, and thank you for doing that. Mike, could you run this back to the sacristy for me, please? Because the humidity uh, made the tape fall off, and it doesn't want to hang up anymore. So. Uh, and I want to give a huge shout out to everyone who uh, helped us with the Sunflower Festival, Sunflower Fair yesterday. It was a beautiful day. We had lots of people come through the church. Greg and Sandra gave lots of tours of our windows. Uh, it was just a nice day to be present in the community and to meet people and to give out cookies and popcorn and water. So thank you for that beautiful day. I will admit that even though I didn't work very hard, I did go straight home afterwards and lay on my bed for the rest of the day because all that greeting and heat and fresh air was a lot. Right, Susie? Yeah. Um, third, our community dinner is this Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Now, all the food is being provided by the LaPorte Service League, so we thank them for that. Um, but if a few of us could still be there, first of all, to eat, it is a community dinner, so they're making masticcioli. I'm sure it's going to be delicious. Please come and eat, but we may need a few volunteers to help with some of the serving or the cleanup. We're a little unsure of that. So uh, if you normally come, please come. If you don't normally come, please consider coming. It's a great time to be there. Um, and it does say in the bulletin that we need water, but we don't really need water for the community dinner. Uh, we didn't get it purchased until Thursday, and we have, uh, what did you say, 400 bottles of water, which I hope will last us a few months. Up next, I have a couple announcements from the diocese. Now remember, I work part-time for the diocese, and one of the things that I have to do is uh, put together our diocesan convention. I'm blessed this year because Canon Christopher is actually helping with a lot of that because I'm not going to be here for diocesan convention. If you remember, I'm going on my study tour with my leadership group. Cut to the chase, Michelle. Uh, on the Friday, the 30th of September, our presiding bishop is going to be hosting a hymn sing at Valparaiso University. And everyone is invited to attend. Y'all are invited to attend. They're actually um, trying to raise money to give some, uh, some donations to historically black colleges and universities. And so if you'd like to sponsor a hymn or get a group together to do that, we can do that for $500. 
Um, but if you want to just go and sing and be present, it's at 7 p.m. on Friday the 30th at VU. If you want more details, it was in the newsletter. And secondly, and almost as importantly, the next morning will be the opening convention Eucharist, and presiding Bishop Michael Curry will be um, offering the sermon in the wonderful way that he preaches. So if you can make it just even only for the opening Eucharist on Saturday, October 1st at 9 a.m., again at Valparaiso University. Now that particular service is in that, their beautiful Resurrection Chapel. If you've never been there, it's a terrific time to go. So please consider attending either of those events. Um, vestry meeting today at 1045. And just a really big thank you today to every single one of you here and a lot of you that aren't here. Uh, I just, I, I feel so much gratitude and appreciation for all the little ways and big ways that we contribute to make our St. Paul's community stronger, more Christ-loving, and to perpetuate it into the future. So I just want to say thank you to you because I feel full of gratitude this morning. So have I forgotten anything? Jean, Sue, Margie. Okay, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
of thy tender mercy didst give thine only son Jesus Christ to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made thereby as one oblation of himself once offered a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again for in the night in which he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we in all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, 
Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen.
thy faithful people at every altar of thy church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated. We desire to offer to thee praise and thanksgiving. We remember thy death, Lord Christ. We proclaim thy resurrection. We await thy coming in glory. And since some of us cannot receive thee today in the sacrament of thy body and blood, we beseech thee to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us in thy grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from thee. May we live in thee and thou in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Please join us for coffee hour. We have lots of goodies downstairs. In